Now, before we begin to listen to Eliphaz, you know, three friends, they went through three rounds of speeches. The first to kick off was Eliphaz. Um, Jofa only spoke twice, the rest spoke three times. Before we do, let's look at the, the friends, the comforters. Number one, they came from distant land, from quite far away, and they came. They came to comfort. They came, I won't say fellowship, but at least to come in this hour of suffering just to, to keep company with them and so forth. But I want to draw a comparison. Our friend, our friend who sticketh closer than a brother, he comes. And he comes to what? To want to suck with us. So you look at Revelation 3.20. Again, I mentioned this before, this is not for evangelism. Because Jesus was standing outside the church. You know the seven churches? He was standing outside the church. He was talking to believers. But anyway, praise the Lord, many preachers use this and uh, many souls got saved. But technically, no. It, it shouldn't be used for evangelism. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in <coughs> to him and dine with him and he with me. To fellowship with us, with his sheep. The shepherd wants to share fellowship with his sheep and he is our friend. And we shall see as we read how great are these friends of Job. Did they come to dine with him, to sup with him, to fellowship with him? In fact, their stay made Job felt more miserable. Okay? The other reference is John 21 verse 1. This, you don't need to turn there. Uh, this was the occasion after resurrection. Then, Peter and the fellow disciples, what did they do? They went fishing. They went back to their old trade. Earlier on, in chapter uh, 1, chapter 3 of John, or Matthew, uh, they left their trade and they followed Jesus. Now Jesus no longer around. They went back to fishing. And then while they were out in, in the sea, Jesus was on the shore. And then Jesus said what? Breakfast is ready. Right? Remember, also tells us that hey, the resurrected body can also eat. <laughs> so, Jesus' uh, desire is to fellowship with us. So as a friend, as a friend, when we go and meet others, when we go to help, then let's do it. Let's fellowship with them. Let's help them. Be helpful to them. Okay? That's the comparison. And the second thing that the friends did, they sat with him. They sat with Job. So I can almost imagine Job is here and then Eliphaz, Bildad, Soha. Okay. These are friends. But the words that came out from their mouth are not very friendly. And this reminds us of uh, Psalms 23 verse 5. You know, Psalm 23 verse 5. He prepared for us a table in the presence of our yes. enemies. <coughs> Belly of death is verse 4. Verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. At that point in time, the three friends were like enemies of Job. Yet fear not, fear not, because God will prepare a table, that table of food, of nourishment, of necessary for you. God will prepare. And people see enemies, they run. But God said, don't worry, there is fellowship here. Don't worry about your enemies. Okay? So you 
see the difference. Even if you are facing enemies, God is there with you. Next, Job talked with no. The friends talked with Job. And this is better than talking behind. They could have stayed no, in Saudi Arabia, in, in, in Euphrates River, and, in, and somewhere else, in Egypt, wherever. And then they just talk behind his back. No good. We shouldn't. So they came and they talked to Job. So we compare Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Now the three friends were offering wisdom. And were the wisdom wrong? No, not wrong. But applicable or not? That is the question. I mean, we seek the truth, but we must seek the truth that will help our need. Like somebody said, uh, in America, people go around with the black card and so on. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. You know, very openly they can do that. You can't do it in Singapore, right? But Jesus is the answer. Let somebody stop and say, but what is the question? <laughs> you understand? You understand? Huh? You, you must speak wisdom to address a need. You know what I mean? In, in a situation like Job, that there must be some relevant wisdom. Don't just apply a general uh, theory or theology, but it's of no relevance to Job. So, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, means to their forefathers, God has spoken through the prophets. And in these last days, this last days, referring to our time, spoken to us by His Son, Jesus, whom He has appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the worlds. So, our years are tuned to our Lord Jesus Christ. He is indeed our friend. And God is speaking to us through Him today, through His Word. Okay? Don't go and listen to so much wisdom. And the other one is Hebrews 12.24. Hebrews 12, 24. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. No. Jesus' blood speaks of what? Grace. Mercy. Forgiveness. Right? When He shed His blood, He speaks of all this. Grace and mercy and forgiveness and so on. Abel's blood you know who was Abel, right? Mm -hmm. He was killed by his brother Cain. Okay. And that did not speak of forgiveness, unforgiveness. He wants revenge. So, we look unto Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And so, like what the, the friends of Job did, they came, they sat, and they talked to Job. But let's do it the way Jesus would have done it. So we, we always have this uh, thing, what will Jesus do? So if you are caught in a situation, you are in a dilemma, do or don't do, then ask yourself, what will Jesus do? Because if Jesus would, then I can. I have no problem with that. Okay? So let's help people who are in need like Jesus would have helped that person. So with this, wait one more, I think. Ah. I also want to prepare you uh, as we start with LFS. Who are these three friends? They were brilliant philosophers. They had uh, so many wonderful things to say. Philosophy. And so in their 
speeches actually they they point to a few things and uh, basically what they are trying to say is Job, excuse me, Job, you must be an awful sinner for these things to happen to you. Because good people, all these things don't happen to good people. Good people will be blessed and they have a long life. Maybe generally it's true, but not always. Because I also see the wicked prosper. We will reach on it. Okay? So Job, you must be an awful sinner. Job, God must be punishing you. And you better get your life straightened out. That means what? Job, you better repent. You better repent. And then you'll be okay. If you don't, it will get worse. Imagine you go to hospital and tell the person, yeah. hey, God must be punishing you. God not happy with you. You know, you must be an awful sinner. Some secret sinner that we all don't know in your closet that you do all this. You better repent now. Otherwise, you won't get out of this hospital. That's not the way. That's not the way. Okay? So, let's read. Eliphaz. God is strength, or God is fine goal. And being the first to go, he, scholars said, likely he was the oldest. So, he had this voice of experience. So you are senior, you go first. Then Eliphaz, the Temanite, answered and said, and this is after seven days, after seven days of silence. And now after seven days, he has thought the whole issue through. Now, he replied, he responded to Job. If any, if one attempts a word with you, will you become dreary? But who can withhold himself from speaking? Surely you have instructed many and you have strengthened weak hands. But let's look at verse 2. If one attempts a word with you, will you become weary? But who can withhold himself from speaking? You know what does he say? Actually, uh, do you mind if I speak? But if you don't, even if you mind, I will still speak. I'm going to speak anyway. You understand? This is what he was trying to say. Who can withhold himself from speaking? So some people say, hey, do you mind? Then if you say yes, he will still do it. Yeah, this, this is fake or false politeness. And in verse 3 to 5, this Eliphaz acknowledged Job's mercy. That, that means Job had been merciful to others before. He has done good. Surely you have instructed many and you have strengthened weak hands. Your words, your advice, your words have upheld him who was stumbling and you have strengthened the feeble knees. But now it comes upon you and you are weary. So verse 3 and 4 say that hey, you did well. When people were down, you helped them. When they were weak, you strengthened them. But now it comes upon you and you are weary. It touches you and you are troubled. You know what he's saying? Okay, so he was very sarcastic. Hey, when people, when you were well, you were helping others. Huh? Yeah, you know, people weak, you help them. Down, you, have, you lift them up. But now, you are down. Why are you troubled? Can't you help yourself? That's what he's saying. Okay? But now, it comes upon you and you are weary. You can help others. Why can't you help yourself? And that's what they say to our Lord Jesus. You heal so many. <clears throat> you resurrected uh, Lazarus. Why, don't, why can't you come down from the cross? Right? We always have people like this. But now it comes upon you and you are weary. Why can't you help yourself? It touches you and you are troubled. Again, if you have friends like this, huh? don't need enemies. It is not your reverence, your confidence. 
and the integrity of your ways, your hope, your reference. Oh, that means you reveal God, right? So, it's not your reverence, your confidence. Your confidence is in God. But I, I don't think, I don't think Job at this moment lost his reverence for God. And he said, and the integrity of your ways, your hope. I think Job was commended by God as holding on to integrity. So this friend is starting on the wrong foot. But, as I said, we have got too many unqualified spiritual counsellors. But praise be to God that we have one wonderful counsellor. Isaiah 9 verse 6. As we go along, I'll draw the comparison. Okay? But Isaiah 9 verse 6, we sing this every Christmas. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government is will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Wonderful Counselor. The best. The best. No need to pay by the hour. You go counselor, you pay no. This one, wonderful counselor. He listens. And then he speaks to you. So Verse 7, back to chapter 4. Remember now, whoever perish being innocent, or where were the upright ever cut off? You know what you know what the friend was saying? Hey, the innocent uh, perish. Do you see any innocent perish? Uh, do you see any upright person cut off? Basically, what he was saying, don't have. The innocent never perish. The upright never cut off. But you are perishing. Job, you are perishing. You are being cut off. That means, you know what? You are not upright now. <laughs> you are not innocent. So I'm just trying to bring to you, uh, expound to you in simple terms. You know what theology is this? This is Christless theology. Christless without Christ. Why? Why? Why do I say that? It's not me. It's, it's one scholar. He said, "This is Christless theology." I said, "What do you mean?" You know why? Because we have one who was innocent and he perished in the cross. We have one who was upright and he was cut off at Calvary. His name is Jesus. So for you to say, "Whoever perished being innocent." Or were the upright ever cut off? You don't know Jesus. That's why your theology is Christless. You do not know Christ. Understand? Okay. Verse 8. Now, he's, he's speaking from a very high point of experience. See, wow. I take more salt than you take rice, like some people say, right? <clears throat> Even as I have seen, that means experience, huh? those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. Is it true? It's true. It's a, I mean, as a general statement, it is true. If you sow, you will reap. That is the principle of life. Galatians 6 7. You reap what you sow. So you, you, you sow iniquity. You will reap iniquity. The same. True. Verse 9. By the blast of God. That means God slapped you. By the blast of God's breath or something. By the blast of God, they perish. And by the breath of His anger, they are consumed. True. As a general statement. Now, I want to tell you, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, in their speeches and they got statements which are true but may not be relevant. You understand? It is true. Yes, what you sow, you shall reap. And for those who have been unrighteous, by the blast of God they perish, by the breath of His anger they are consumed. 
But it is not true for Job at this moment. Because God was not consuming him. God was not punishing him for no I mean God was not destroying him. One thing we must learn, God will discipline his children, but will not destroy his children. You read from Genesis to Revelation. Yes, he destroyed the Canaanites and all the idol worshippers, the non repentant and so on. But for his children, he gave a lot of mutants, a lot of second chances, third chances and so on. He will discipline us, but he will not destroy us. Where do you read in the Bible that the guy was so disciplined until he gave up? I don't want Jesus. God, don't have. They always come to repentance. Okay? So what he said is true, but not relevant for Job. Because Job did not plow iniquity. He did not sow iniquity. Verse 10. The roaring of the lion. And you know the lion is a picture of the wicked. The devil prowls like a roaring lion. Right? Okay. The roaring of the lion. The voice of the fierce lion. And the teeth of the young lions are broken. Okay. Okay. The old lion perishes for lack of prey, and the cups of the lioness are scattered. You know what was Eliphaz referring to? Job and your children. Let me read again. Huh? Job, when you were wealthy and you have all your kids and all those things around, when you were the greatest, you were roaring. Okay? The roaring of the lion, the voice of the fierce lion. Now, the teeth of the young lions are broken. Your children are no more. Right? At this moment, his ten kids were taken away. Children no more. And the old lion perishes for lack of prey. Now, Job, you are old. You are not the old Job. You are the new old Job. You understand? You, you, you are down. You are perishing. You are being cut off. You understand? And the cups of the lioness are scattered. So, right now, means what? Your situation is you are lonely and you are miserable. You look, you look in an animal planet and, and, and you know, lonely planet or whatever, um, animal planet and all these things. Uh, uh, when the lion is old, uh, he's on his own, uh, he's vulnerable. The, he can't keep up with the pack. Then he's actually there. You know. Sooner or later, he'll be eaten up. So, now, whom have you got? Your cubs are gone. Lioness also gone. You're on your own. And that's what this... Eliphaz was insinuating against Job. Understand? Now we come to verse 12. Verse 12, we, we do see some of these people. We call them pseudo-spiritual people. Pseudo means not real, not real. Yeah, Very spiritual. And they like to use all these uh, spiritual things that frighten me. You know, God spoke to me. God gave me a vision. Wow, no, I, I received this revelation and it's about you. Let it come. They, if they put themselves in a, in a position of authority and if you are weak in the faith and you do not know the word, you get so beholden to them, you get so frightened. And I tell you, there are people who are like that. But those who, of you who are in this class, please don't ever fall into them. So, let's see. Verse 12. There are people who manipulate. They like to manipulate. Even prophets. So, I, I don't really care who stands behind the pulpit. I want to hear what you say. And some people stand behind the pulpit and they manipulate. Now, a word was secretly brought to me. And my ear received a whisper of it. Oh. 
I got the deep IDD like you don't have. The word came to me. Now a word was secretly brought to me, and my ear received a whisper of it. In disquieting thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, wow, when you're all sleeping, I receive a vision. Fear came upon me and trembling, wow, frightening, frightening, which made all my bones shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair on my body stood up. <laughs> Maybe you watch some Thai horror movie. <laughs> right now, people are watching Thai horror movie. Right? Please, don't watch horror movies. When I was growing up, before I knew Christ, I loved all these horror movies. But please stop. These are the lies of the devil. And you do not know. They actually put fear in you. Just a scene, just a scene. And you think, ah, good entertainment, just walk away. But one day, when you are caught in, in a situation, suddenly this thing brings to mind, then you get frightened and so on. Don't. Don't. This is the lion prowling. No, this is the devil prowling like a lion, looking for who is vulnerable to devour. Okay, don't go and watch all this. Watch comedies, and I love comedy. That's why I, I, I behave like what I <laughs> Then, Anyway, he stood still, verse 16. But I could not discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes. There was silence. Then I heard a voice saying, Gee, this is the voice. Can a mortal be more righteous than God? Can a man be more pure than his maker? Hey, is this something very profound? It is something very new. No. I mean, it's like, wow, I received this vision and, and, and this light and, and a voice spoke to me. Water is wet. Oh, <laughs> revelation. <laughs> but that's what he's saying. I mean, if you were Job, wow, 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 wow. suspense building up. What, what is God saying to you? that will relieve me of my situation. Then you say, can a mortal man be more? Of course I know a mortal man, that means I've got date of departure or no. I can't be more righteous than God. Can I be more pure than a maker? No, I can't. Can you tell me something more uh, 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 profound or something that I've not heard before? Anyway, these are the people who come along and say, God tells me so. God told me to tell you. Okay? That's the worst thing. Verse 18. If he puts no trust in his servants, if he charges his angels with error, how much more those who dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed before a moth. Now, so what he's saying is, God will not trust his servants. If God puts no trust in his servant, if God charges his angels, who are his angels? What One of them is Lucifer. Okay? God charges his angels with error. His angels are not perfect. And when Lucifer went, one third of the angels went with him. So they also had error. So who are you, Job? Who are you? Who are you? You are one who dwells in houses of clay. We are mortal. You know, this, this, is, this is our dwelling of clay. From dust to dust. Just now, we read 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. Check 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 1. Which sometimes I feel, I mean, I, I, I preach at funerals and so on. For we know, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, temporary, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. But while we are here, 
this earthly house, this house, this tent, temporary, this dwelling of clay. That's what you want, Job. If God can't put his trust in his servants, can't, and he charges his angels with, with error, how much, how much more you, you are just one who dwells in a house of clay, uh, whose foundation in, is in the dust, from dust to dust, who are crushed before a mob. So, Job, you are nobody. You are nobody in the eyes of God. Okay? They are broken in pieces from morning till evening. They perish forever with no one regarding. Does not their own excellence go away? They die even without wisdom. So what Job, no, Eliphaz is saying, you know, the frailty of humanity. That means we are so frail, we are so weak. We are here only for a brief season and we got no powers, nothing. We can be crushed, we can be broken and we will perish. And the worst thing he said, the last thing he said is, they die even without wisdom. We need the truth and that meets our need and I have mentioned that. So, learn how to apply the wisdom appropriately. Because Eliphaz, did Eliphaz say anything new? No. Did he say anything helpful to Job? No. He lacked the sympathy for Job. And Paul warned us in Colossians 2.18. Colossians 2.18. Colossians 2.18. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, Jesus, from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints, and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Don't let anyone cheat you of your reward. Because you know what? You are going on this path. You are walking in the light as Jesus is in the light. The devil just wants to come and redirect you. Just point you a little bit off. And once you go off course, you are going somewhere else. Don't let him cheat you of your reward. And people will come along off up with their with their fleshly mind and, and, and put other things into you. No. We rest in Him. We rest in the Word of God. We rest in His truth. And He will direct you. He will see you through. Okay? In these last days, there will be such people. But we will not fall victim to them. So Father, we thank you even for this couple of chapters that we have just studied. Indeed, Lord, we are so assured that you have the very best for us. You care for us. You love us, Lord. And we are precious in your sight. So I pray, Lord, that you will continue to help us, that we can be helpful to others. Teach us to have sympathy, that we can suffer with them and yet we can encourage them. We can lift them up even with your word of life. Lord, that we will not put them down because you did not put them on us down. But by the grace, by your grace, by your power, by your enablement, we will lift our brothers and sisters up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.